Today finds us in a very interesting and unvisited place. The most western island in the Pitcairn Island group. Though sometimes called Holiday Island, you won't find many vacationers here, other than the birds. Let's see what we can see on Ueno Island. Anchor, 20 meters of chain, first big buoy, rest of the chain, second buoy, uh, half the line, that buoy, and the other half of the line tied up here. And then we'll tie the bridles to the front, and that'll end up being 70 meters. Uh, so 210 feet. So if we anchor in 30 feet, it's seven to one, and that's perfect. So we're, we'll see, and we'll dive it, and we'll, we'll show you how it looks afterwards. But I really want to perfect this, this uh, buoy anchoring procedure to keep the chain and the rope off the ground and, and away from all the coral. One, not to break it, and two, not to lose our boat potentially if, if it wraps around. Because what'll happen is the chain will wrap around coral, and then the rope will wrap around coral, and then it'll it'll chafe and it'll it'll cut through. Wow, this is pretty. Wow, I just gotta stop talking here. Hello, where are we, and what are we doing? We are at Oeno Atoll, and we just dropped a hook. We set it. I watched it. I watched it um, dropping onto sand, and then we set the, set the anchor. And uh, now I'm gonna go jump in a second time to make sure that the chain and everything is off the coral and in the sand, that everything is set and good to go so that James and me can swim in and scout the boat entrance, which is right here. There's barely any waves and there's nothing breaking. So if we find a passage, we could actually bring the boat into Oeno and the water is gonna be really flat and it's gonna be As you can see, the atoll's right behind me. The wind's coming from our beam, and the, the outgoing tide of the atoll is keeping us beam onto these waves, and it's really uncomfortable. I don't ever get seasick, and I'm getting a little woozy. And also, the, the, the boat is taking big waves up underneath it, so we gotta get out of here. Unfortunately, we tried to get in there, but we, we just couldn't get the boat in there with these waves. So this place would be cool if it was really docile and you could get your boat inside. I'm pretty sure a cat can get in there, but we just can't. One of my patrons sent me some weather and said that we've got good crossing winds for uh, today and tomorrow and, and Sunday. 
So hopefully it'll only take us two days to get there. We're anchored right at the entrance and the waves are just so big, I don't want to try it with the boat. We tried once and we went in there until we had about a meter underneath the boat and the waves were picking up the boat and slamming it down and we got scared and we backed out. So we could probably stay here for a couple more days and see if the weather calms down, but we're taking some big hits on the bottom of the boat, so I'd like to leave. Okay, so a bunch of shit just went down. We're on our way to Gambier from Oeno, the last of the Pitcairn Islands. We got a fish on the line. We thought it was a tuna, but it ended up being a wahoo. Look at that bad boy. Beautiful fish. But in order to catch the fish and not have it yank out, I backwinded the jib and it went a little too far and the main jibed and it busted the main. I've got a piece that broke straight off of it. So this piece is on there like that and you can see it's got a foot on this side but this side just completely broke off. It also broke the, uh, it took the threads off of it. So that's what I got now. It just ripped that entire piece off the bottom. Uh so we're about 150 miles away from Gambier. We got a little too much fish that we can eat and we only have a jib. So hopefully this bad boy will be able to get us to Gambier's in 24 hours. Uh, we got about 140 miles to go, so that's that's pretty quick. That's like six knots. So we gotta run, we gotta, we gotta move. Okay, it's like uh, probably three o'clock in the morning, two o'clock in the morning, and it's the night we caught the Wahoo. And I, we are experiencing the highest winds we've ever experienced on Singara. It's probably 35 knots. I, I don't have a wind instrument, but the waves are coming over the boat, like big. They're hitting the side of the boat and just flying. I just got drenched. I'm all wet from it. Luckily, we were motoring at the time because we had been becalmed, so we needed to run the water maker anyway, so we just ran the engines for about an hour, almost exactly an hour. And then the wind picked back up with a vengeance. I'm gonna try to use my light and show you guys what it's like out there, but it's crazy. Jesus. This is one of those times where I wish I had a big monohull belt so I could just button down the hatches and go to sleep. It's scary. We're taking big rolls and uh, everything's falling everywhere and not fun. The weather has calmed down since yesterday night. It was really, really wild. We took a couple waves that actually scared the shit out of me. Definitely the strongest winds that we have ever encountered out to sea. We have to move still. We have to have sail out because otherwise the waves would just be slapping the shit out of us so James jumped out there but naked in the storm and uh, put a little bit of jib out and um, so we rode the storm the whole night and the most part of the day it's calming down it's still not really nice outside but um, we're still making great progress so the other thing that happened last night was that the um, waves were coming over the boat so hard and so much water that it pulled out one of the stoppers for the rain catchment and we ended up getting water catchment from the sea which turned all our water to brackish so we cannot drink the water we have in the tanks anymore that's embarrassing and stupid so I whittled new plugs today they're really in there good and we're gonna use up all the water for washing and uh, there's not much in there anyway. There's only probably 10 or 15 gallons. So we're gonna use it all up, drain the tanks out, and then use the water maker to make more. Probably tomorrow. We have some emergency drinking and cooking water that we can use, but I don't like running the engines if we don't have to. So probably when we start going into the um, Gambier Atoll and have to motor through there, we'll just run the water maker and fill back up our tanks. Lie in front of us now, visible. 
We're still four miles away, but I think we can say now that we're officially standing in French Polynesian waters now. We've heard so much about this place and um, I'm quite excited to be finally here and explore it for myself. from Tahiti. We've been off the grid, off the net and offline for three weeks now and that's why we're making a little update video for you guys right now. So we left, last time you heard from us, we left Gambiers. We sailed through the two motors, didn't see sh because um, it was really windy and we were running from storms the whole time. We decided to spend the 14th of July, the fest of the um, the storm on the Bastille, is that how you say that in English? I'm not sure. Bastille Day. Bastille Day in Tahiti because there's supposed to be a big fiesta here. So that's where we are right now. We just anchored this morning. While we were away, we hit a few big milestones. We, we passed 200 patrons. Super cool. Thank you guys for supporting us and welcome to the family. And I can't believe it's gotten so big. It's, it's really, really exciting. Hey, Leo, come here. Come here and say hi. Also, we have crew. We got new crew. Leo, he's awesome. <laughs> Hello there. <laughs> he joined us. He's Brazilian and he joined us in Gambier Islands. And yeah, there we go. Good, great, great sailor, <laughs> cool guy. Yeah, just come over here, man. We love him. So I love them there's, as three, well. there's three in our family. Yeah. What were you gonna say? That I love you as well. Uh, okay, good. Okay, get out. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's pretty much it. We just wanted to give you guys an update. If you have ever looked at our goals that we have on the site on Patreon, it said that um, we need to update the boat, get it seaworthy for longer passages therefore we needed a water maker and what else was on there new solar panels new solar panels Perfect. and we got all that <laughs> we made it to the areas of the world that we really wanted to see Easter Island and Pitcairn and this is all because of you and we just wanted to celebrate that for a second with you guys two more milestones one if you guys have been with me from the beginning you'll remember a video the first video I ever posted was an intro hi everyone my name is James you may or may not know me but about two months ago I bought a catamaran and for the last two months, I've been living in the previous owner's uh, yard. <laughs> well, behind his house on the boat. And outfitting the boat and refitting the boat and getting it ready to go to sea. And I'm going to sail it to Tahiti. We just made it to Tahiti today, three years later. That's, I mean, super cool. And it's all because of you guys. Thank you very much. And now the last point of today's agenda. We have a big surprise. We have really good news for you guys. We have a new dinghy coming to us. We got an OC tender, we're gonna pick it up next week in Moria, an island that's 16 miles from here. And uh, yeah, that's gonna dramatically change, change our lives, yeah, honestly. We, we haven't had a dinghy since Easter Island. I mean, we've been paddling our dinghy for thousands of miles. Well, not, not literally thousands of miles, but like on our trip of thousands of miles, it's been a bitch. So we're gonna take the outboard in and get work done here, and then we're gonna get a new dinghy and we're gonna be set. 
And then, yeah. the, and then there's gonna be some other drama, I'm sure. That's how. Because <laughs> that's our lives. Okay, so last, like, exciting, a last. All right. Slogan, anything. Break it, bail it, fix it, sail it. <laughs> Thank you for watching this week's episode of Sailing Zingaro. In the next episode, we take delivery of our new OC tender. And we get a chance to meet Russ, the owner and builder of these amazing composite beasts. We then use it to drag the old dinghy over to some needy friends, and we finally get to say goodbye to Sir Sinks a lot. We then sail to the neighboring island of Morea, meet up with some friends, and have a jumping contest. And we even run into an old friend you might recognize. Don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to be updated when we post content. And we look forward to seeing you next week on Sailing Zingaro.